Hey everybody, it's me, Mixed Martial Arts Analyst for FrontProofMedia.com. You can follow me on Twitter at CarBasil and at the blogboardjungle.com, as well as my MMA news and SureDog.com. Today I have an interview with Javi Ayala, who's in the heavyweight division in Bellator MMA. Bellator 199, he faces Chick Congo May 12th. Um, it's the uh, main event is Ryan Bader versus King Mo. It's Saturday. So he gave us some time so very close to the event. So I'm going to play that for you now over at Front Proof Media. Um, again, he fought Roy Nelson uh, in January, I believe. And then before that, he knocked out Sergei Karatanov. So he's definitely a force to be reckoned with in the heavyweight division. So here you go, Javi Ayala. Go ahead. Okay, Mr. Ayala, thanks for taking the time to talk, man. I, I really appreciate uh you making some time so close to your fight next weekend? Well, it's no problem, man. Thank you for uh, for taking the for, for doing the interviews on me. I'm actually uh, I'm just looking at some photos from when you uh, knocked out Sergey Karatanov uh, to prepare for the piece I'm going to write on you. Um, I feel like I, I'm trying to fi figure out the best way to ask you this. Ever since that fight, it seems like uh, I don't. I don't want to necessarily ask if you think you're you're uh, uh, what do they call it the gateway guy to, to the heavyweight division, or if you're more of a test for folks in the division. Because ever since then, obviously you welcomed Roy Nelson, and now you're fighting Chet Congo. I mean, how do you feel about the matchmaking ever since that win? Uh, you know, I think ever since that win, it, it kind of showed uh, the Bellator matchmakers that you know I'm I'm one of the tougher guys. I mean, I, I can't hang with these, these bigger name guys, so uh, I feel like they're they're doing it to test me to see, okay, let's see how good he really is, and it showed in my performance, especially against Roy. You know, I, I know uh, my ground game, my my submission defense felt great. The only thing I, I I noticed I had to improve on was my takedown defense, and that's something we worked a lot on for this for this camp. Well, that's, yeah, that's actually the next thing I was going to bring up because, uh, I mean, a lot of people thought that was going to be an easy fight for Roy Nelson. And uh, I don't know if you saw the post-fight interview afterward. The first thing he said was uh, that guy was a lot tougher than I thought. And a lot of people thought it was going to be an easy fight for him too. And, and I was actually, because I saw your last fight against Karatanov, I, I, kept, I was one of the few people that was like, uh, that's going to be a tough fight. And, and you showed that there. So I feel like this fight with Czech Congo, I mean, your division this year... There's a lot of attention on the heavyweight division this year. So, I mean, is there anything? Wasn't there some talk of you or or, or Congo being an alternate for the tournament as well? Uh, just, uh, all I have heard about that before was from uh, when uh, Scott Coker had mentioned it in a post fight interview. I forgot what uh, what fight it was, but he had mentioned that. But um, somewhat where left off, I haven't had any more updates on that. But um, I'm happy to fight. Check. Is uh, I mean, if the opportunity arises for you to jump in, though, yeah, I mean, I'm sure you'd want to jump at at, at the tournament. I mean, because uh, this obviously this year, all eyes have been on the heavyweight division. Um, if 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 fortune has you somehow plugged into it, I mean, uh, how, how would how would that change your whole outlook for the rest of the year? Uh, you know, that would that would be great. I'm totally up to hop in if somebody gets hurt or. They need me to fill in for somebody. I'm, I'm totally game. Um, I feel like it'd be a great opportunity for me. Um, I would like to get quite a bit more fights in this year. Um, so you're fighting uh, Congo, obviously, uh, next weekend or this coming week at uh, 199. Um, do you uh, do you think like what's what's the biggest threat against somebody like him? I mean, he seems to be. Uh, off the top of my mind, I don't know the exact measurements, but does he have reach on you? I mean, what are you worried about from him the most? Uh, you know, I know he has, uh, he has uh, a little slight reach on me. He's, he's taller. He's a little leaner than me. But uh, my cardio is exactly where I needed to be at. It showed, like in my last fight, the third round, I still had a gas to, to keep fighting. Um, the one thing I, I feel like I have to worry about with Shaq is that he's tough. He's a, he's a real tough guy. Uh, he's been in there with multiple guys and he's been hurt and he's come back to win so uh, 
I just, I, I would say his toughness is, is probably like his, his, my biggest threat. Do you think uh, you have, uh, I mean, as far as like, because uh, I, I don't really consider him like a ground guy. You think your submission game versus him is, is obviously uh, better than his versus like when, when you fought with Nelson, obviously he's black belt in jiu-jitsu and, and competed in grappling. Um, do you think that, that you hold any advantages over Congo outside of I, I feel like I feel, I feel like my, my actual submission game is, is on a higher level, but... Uh, you, you never know. You check doesn't really show too much of his submission game. I know he, he daily he's been holding down guys and uh, just working ground and pound and kind of grinding them out. But uh, that's something we we've, we've been training for and getting ready for. So, what do you think about um, as far as like? Uh, his inactivity. You've obviously been fighting more than him. If you look at like your last few fights and the last time he fought, I mean, do you think do you think that's gonna uh, play in your favor come Saturday or uh, the May twelfth? Uh, I would hope so, but he's a, he's a veteran in the sport, and uh, he might be able to shake off that ring rust right away. Uh, but I know that that plays a key a key factor. I've had it happen to me where I've, I've, I think I took like a year off, and then I went back and took a fight and. I mean, it didn't feel the same. It felt kind of weird getting hit. Yeah. Um, the um, the the fight with Roy Nelson. I know it didn't go, turn out the way that you'd like, but at, you just going the the distance with him was that like a small victory for you too? Like kind of letting yeah, people you know, know you're there. After that fight, I was I was extremely happy with my performance. Just the the not the takedown part. I feel like my stand up looked great. Um, even just going in there with Roy Nelson, him, him being such a, a veteran of the sport and uh, doing well against him, I thought it was a, it was a giant victory and a giant leap for my career. Yeah, I mean, uh, that was a great fight. So, I mean, I'm really looking forward to to the fight with Congo. I, again, the, uh, as far as I know, you know, you're probably not paying attention to what... what uh, the fans are saying our odds or anything like that, but but what do you think is, is out, out there right now? Do you think people are favoring Congo over you or vice uh, versa? I've been reading a little bit online. I see a lot of people favor uh, Czech just because uh, he's a more well-known name. Um, he's been around, like, like I said, he's been around for a long time and uh, people don't really know too much about me. But uh, come May 12th, they're going to they're gonna learn a whole lot more about me. Yeah, I mean, um, that's a little surprising to me, especially, I mean, the, the finish over Karatanov was, was uh, I mean, maybe because I was there at the event, it, it's such, it was such a memorable win. And then, again, your fight with Nelson, you surprised a lot of people by going the distance. So I, I, I'm hoping that changes for you. Um, if, if you get a finish um, over Congo at 199, do you think, uh, do you, do you think uh, you'll be uh, more main eventing more often? I, you know, I, I would hope so. I, I would hope a lot of people would uh, take knowledge of, of the hard work I put in. and, and uh, I, I put in a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, and a lot of time away from my family uh, for, for, uh, for me to get noticed more. And, and you have a lot of wins by knockout, so I'm assuming that's what you're going to go for uh, against somebody like him, or do you think you're going to have to change it up given the, the, the reach advantage? Uh, you know what the plan is always always to knock them out. That's uh, that's always my plan. Uh, <laughs> but I, I take whatever check gives me. If he if he gives me his, his his neck, I'm gonna take it. He gives me he gives me a clean shot. I'm gonna hit him with with a good one. But uh, it just I'm I'm ready for pretty much anywhere this fight goes. When you said you took some time off, um, how long was it, and and why did you take the time off? Was it an injury? Uh, that was actually uh, the year off. I was talking about was probably about a uh, like a. I think four fights ago, I think I fought Alexander Huddleston. I ended up taking like a year off just for, for uh, to spend more time with my family and then I came back and then uh, I, I just, it felt a little bit weird being inside the cage. Uh, so, but obviously now the, the, the drive is different, like you have, a, it seems like you got a fire laid under you with all the fights you've had recently. Yeah, you know what, finding these big name guys, it, it, helped, it helped light a, a bigger fire underneath me, it's like, okay. These guys are tough. You got to be ready for these guys, Avi. Um, just what I, I got to ask you the the nickname Eye Candy. <laughs> where, 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 what, how did that come to be, or why did you pick that? Uh, actually, you know they say nicknames are, are you don't make them; they're given to you. Yeah. Um, well, I, one day I was uh, I think it was like my fourth professional fight. 
I was, I was in the back and they were interviewing me and they asked, they asked me, hey, do you have a nickname? And I said, I said no, I don't. And uh, one of my good friends, he happened to be my coach at the time. He's like, yeah, you do. I'm like, what is it? He's like, Mike Kennedy, you always say you're the best looking guy in the gym. <laughs> and then me, right away, I'm like, no, 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 that's not my nickname. And um, and so that's where that's where I left off. And then uh, as I'm as I'm in the cage, getting ready to fight, the announcer uh, announces me as uh, Javi I Kendi Ayala. So it, it pretty much just stuck since then. So do you do you do any extra flexing or anything when you would do the the ceremonial weigh-ins because of it, or or is it just something that you kind of live with now? Uh, something I just live with, you know. I just I, I I still I still think I'm the best looking guy in the gym. <laughs> Uh, somewhat, I, I'm a little bit the best looking guy in the heavyweight uh, division too, but that's, that's it in my eyes. Um, you know what I don't have in my notes? I feel like you're probably one of the younger guys in the division too, right? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm tw I just turned 29, I'm going on, going on 30, but uh, I think I'm one of the younger heavyweights in, in Bellator. Yeah, so that's even time. I mean, even with your skill set level at the way it is now, you still got time to grow and, and get better. So there's definitely a, you definitely got time to to make a wave in that in that division before the end of the year. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, every every throughout every year, every fight, every camp, I'm getting better and better. I'm just learning more and more. The um. Just, a lot of fighters seem to want to up the amounts of time they fight this year. Like I know AJ McKee. Uh, likes fighting a lot and then uh, Taiwan Claxton actually said he wanted to fight five times this year so what's in the, what's the number for you? Uh, you know I'd, I'd be happy with about three fights three fights a year is, is good for me I, two to three I, I like to stay, stay ready but I, I, I really like to spend time with my family because that's something that you can never get back is, is that time that you take, you, you take away from them yeah, I mean, uh, camp is probably hard. So, speaking of time, I mean, I really do appreciate you giving me some time today uh, to talk. Um, I appreciate the interview. Um, good luck on at Bellator 199. Uh, thanks for the time, man. I, I really appreciate it. All right, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, again, that was Javi Ayala. He's 10-6. and 6. Um busy young man in bellator as you heard he fights at bellator 199 the main event of that event is ryan Bader versus king mo it's another round in the tournament and then after that we jump to the semifinals so if you're following the heavyweight division and the tournament you best watch bellator 199 um thank you for listening if you'd like to help out this podcast please go to the blogboardjungle.com when you want to make an amazon purchase and purchase any of your Amazon products by using the links on that website. And thank you for listening. Again, Bellator 199 is live Saturday, free on Paramount Network from the SAP Center. King Mo versus Ryan Bader and Javi Ayala is fighting Czech Congo. I have a feeling that the winner might be tapped as an alternate. Um, that's just me being conspiracy theorist. But again, thanks for listening. Take care. podcast you just heard was recorded with anchor if you want to make your own download the android or ios app completely free from anchor.fm slash podcast that's anchor.fm slash podcast